Welcome to Till Division Ideas. Till Division Ideas is a program that explores ideas and concepts in the following areas. Psychology, parapsychology, consciousness, ESP, dream, spirituality, healing, creativity, quantum physics, business, wealth, and the Word of God. Today I decided to present just like uh, the title of some of the courses that we offer and, and a snippet, a little information about each of the courses. The courses will be 14 and they're within a program. So the program is um, very intense. It's also extremely deep. We begin usually with um, self-knowledge. Self-knowledge is knowing yourself. And, and once you know yourself, to, to thine own self be true. You, you do not need to feel that you have to impress anyone or do or say something to please someone else. In being yourself, you, you automatically, you're, you're direct, you're, you have a sense of integrity, a sense of uh, authenticity as to who you know yourself to be. Of course, initially, <clears throat> when you begin doing this kind of work, you may have a particular perception as to who you think you are. However, as the, the work progresses, you discover that you had uh, uh, an impression of who you wanted to be, not necessarily who you were. Or, or you may think of yourself uh, in a negative way. And I'll give you a for instance. Many, many years back, uh, I was given a name. God, God gives me names, by the way. So he called me a name, and he called me Warrior of God. When I got that name, this was in 1983, 1984, I felt that name did not fit me. Why? Because I perceived myself to be scared, to be a coward, and I, and I felt that you know, that, uh, why, was, why would God give me that name? It doesn't fit. Lord and behold, 1983 to the present, I have grown into that name to the point that I don't identify at all with the coward part that I used to feel and think and behave. Okay, so th that's an, a, an example how one grows, because we, we're all growing. Uh, even though you may feel that you're stuck in one particular place because of a situation happening in your life, so you feel stuck, that you don't feel you're progressing, you don't feel you're achieving, you don't feel victorious, so you feel stuck. Um, usually when people feel like that, they behave like that, and ultimately whatever work project they may be engaged in um, doesn't uh, progress. It doesn't it's, it's not the best that they can be. It doesn't reach that level of excellence. So in, in these 14 courses we give, we give you work to do, both uh, inner work, which is spiritual work, which is, um, we call it spiritual. It's, um, it's inner. It's your thinking. It's your feeling. Um, it's your attitude. It's your perception. But then you take it to the next level and you bring it out into the actual physical world. Okay, so that, that's one of the courses that we offer, and it's called Self-Knowledge. And um, you, you attempt to know as much of yourself as you can. Some people may feel somewhat hesitant simply because they have things that are hidden, secret, and they're uh, somewhat concerned that that may come up. Well, if that's the case, then you keep that private. You're entitled to keep some things to yourself, and, so, and whatever you feel free, you share with the larger group. Okay. The next uh, workshop we offer is called, it's one of the courses, Shadow Work. In Shadow Work, we, we address those parts of ourselves that we don't like, that we keep hidden, buried, and, uh, and we project it onto someone else. And the reason we do that kind of stuff, it's a defense mechanism. To use projection, you are projecting onto the other person that which you do not like about yourself. And 
the person does this unconsciously. They're not aware. They don't mean to, but, and they'll find fault. They, they enter criticism, blaming, condemning, um, judging. They, uh, and they experience different uh, emotions, uh, feelings, such as jealousy, envy, anger, whatever. They're in competition with this other person, but little do they know that it's really a part of themselves, a particle within themselves that they have put out there negating it, not admitting it into the self. So we do a lot of healing, uh, healing work. We take those parts and we call it parts therapy. So we, 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 we heal that aspect, that part, that particle that you have rejected, abandoned, neglected. You refuse to claim it, to recognize it as part of yourself. When we finish with this kind of work, we integrate it into the self and the personality of who you are, and that's done after it has become healed. You, you're ready to say, oh, yeah, yeah, I do that. Oh, yeah, that, that's a part of me. I recognize that. Then you feel free. You have been liberated from that. So, so a lot of healing takes place. That liberation that I just mentioned is a free, and you feel freer. You really do. And once you do that, you release energy that has been dammed inside of you. And so um, when that happens, you don't have that energy. You will often see these people as somewhat tired, lethargic, disboned, um, like, like a little sad, maybe even depressed because they have so much of their energy trapped. It's literally trapped. It's in jail. It's in a prison. It's in a cell. And so we teach you how to release these things, how to let them go. Okay. Another workshop that we have, um, it's called The Inner Child. So The Inner Child, it's a fun kind of an activity whereby you get in touch with your inner child, and, but you get in touch with the happy healthy inner child, not the child that had been mistreated, neglected, abused, um, bullied upon, even though that will come up because we are working with the inner child. And the inner child has been wounded beyond, almost like we think beyond repair, but it is, it can be repaired and it does get repaired during this particular course. There's a, a, some journaling takes place because we give you some free time to journal with key questions so as to stir up the inner child. So there's a lot of crying, a lot of healing taking place, and you usually work with one other person, one partner. When we finish with that piece of work, if you want to share something, you always have the option and you have the freedom either not to share or to share. And so uh, even that part of the exercise, sharing with the larger group, even more healing takes place because in you presenting your personal experience, you trigger uh, things in the other people listening. And, and you will hear it. You will hear the blowing of the nose, coughing. You even hear sobbing. Okay, so it's, it's very deep work. It's, um, extremely beneficial. It's, it's extremely profitable in that um, so much healing takes place. Um, you know, how can I compare it to something physical? Let's say you have a scratch or, um, or, or you cut yourself and you developed a little scab and uh, there was some pus underneath the, the scab. Well, th that pus needs to be drained. <laughs> the thought draining the swamp. Well, it needs to be drained because it, if not drained properly, it will stay there to fester and continue growing. So we, we, it, it's all emotional, psychological, spiritual work, and we, we are trained in this area so that uh, you can feel safe and secure in the environment. And like I always say, you have free will. You can do or dig as deep as you would like to go and, and uproot these things because these things have been deeply rooted within your psyche, within the unconscious part of you. 
So what we do is we bring it up to the conscious level so that you can better work with it because now that particular theme issue is in two places. It's both in the unconscious and it's in the conscious self. And not only is, in, is it in the conscious self, you have willingly uh, shared with a, another person those parts that you feel free to share. Okay, so um, in consci the next course that we offer um, is called Consciousness Racing. In Consciousness Racing, this is super fantastic because we, we introduce your mind. By the way, your mind is not your brain. So the conscious part of your mind. So yeah, I'm also trained in neuroscience, so, and w I also use neurolinguistic, which is NLP. We also use a touch of hypnotherapy, very, very slight, and we do that through meditation um, to bring you into a relaxed state to make you feel you can do this because you have all this help all around you. So quantum physics comes in because it's dealing with that realm, that science, that it's not on the tangible level. So when we look at your mind, we look at the thoughts. And so we say that everything begins with a thought, an idea. So, you know, who put the idea in your mind? Well, God, I believe in God. That's my belief system. You're entitled to yours. So God gave you the mind. God gave everything because he created everything. So the thought, everything. What happens when you have a thought? If you have a, an optimistic thought, very positive, you begin to create uh, proteins that are beneficial for your physical body. Also, they have proven through um, uh, brain imaging that you, you can see what's going on in the brain as you th either think positive thoughts or negative thoughts, happy or sad. Things, changes take place. And they, they say that they look like little trees. It's a, a, they literally can look into your brain, your physical brain. And, and it's very complex. It's a, like web-like. I say web-like because um, that's the best word. It's like connection. It's like a knitting. It's like a, a, the synapses and the neurons and the dendrites firing. And you can see this, you know, parts of your brain lighting up you can see this activity taking place. And so it is so beautiful. Thank you, Joey. And so we, we, we focus in, we zero in, and we attempt to do what we call a change in your mindset. Of course, everything is with your approval. So we, a, a mindset, some people have a mindset of they're always complaining, they're always lamenting, they're always in pain, uh, the world do doesn't run right, nothing works. Uh, you know, so that's their particular mindset. So we attempt to get you out of that and to get you into a more hopeful mindset. And we call that the growth mindset, where, whereby you literally, you can not only can you grow in your brain, you grow these little trees inside your brain, but you can become more creative and it, it, and it happens right then and there because we also have uh, parts that well, either draw it or write a story about it, and people will draw pictures and things that they never thought they could do, they do. Okay, so a simple drawing, nothing fancy because of the, the limitation of time. However, when you get home, away from the course, then you, you can honor that aspect of that workshop, and you can draw and paint and whatever. You can do murals if you so desire. So we also touch, when we do this um, consciousness racing, we touch on brain foods. Brain foods are simply foods that help the body. They nourish you. They, they, they give you nutrients. And, and of course, then we, we point out things that are very detrimental, you know, like sugars and salts and sodas and a lot of stuff, liquor, smoking, a lot of damaging things that we take into the body and we we advise but you have free will you choose to do with your body what you wish but we give you the information at least you have the information 
So we, we, we approach the whole situation from a body, mind, spirit perspective, meaning we give you a little bit for the body, a little bit for the mind, a little bit for the spirit, a little bit for your psychology, the essence, the feeling, the emotions uh, of who you are expressing. So we, we give you the freedom to express, to press out, either with your partner, the one you're working with, or to write it in the little journal that we provide. And so you have many avenues, many options, and you feel free to, to feel that, you know, either to answer a question or, or not answer it, to, to feel free at all times because it's in a safe, uh, guarded situation. Once the work begins, we usually don't allow anyone else to come in, so we urge you to please come in on time, be seated, and we, we tell you, we, we give you a time, and we're very strict about that. We also don't allow any visitors, so no, whoever comes is a, a client, a, a person, a customer. They're paying for this, and so uh, we adhere to those rules. We have certain rules, and uh, we attempt to, to be true to that for the sake of the people taking the courses. Creativity. So creativity, that, that particular course deals, and the word says it, creative. You can be creative in dan dancing, singing, playing an instrument, painting, uh, a, a wall, a mural, whatever. You, you can write uh, an essay. You can write a poem. Uh, so creativity is anything that you do. You can recite a poem. You, you can, um, we don't go into any cooking because uh, of time limitation, really. So we, we, we basically we use a lot of paper. Uh, so you feel free to create with that. Uh, know that later on, on your own time, you can expand on this. We teach you how to create a vision board. And so we may have like crayons, things for you to create a vision board. You can write out the word or draw the picture, or if you have a picture, you, we, we may tell you beforehand so you can bring pictures or a magazine that you can, and have these things already. Um, when I give the, uh, a vision board exercise, and I do it in my home, so I have stacks of magazines and the person goes through them and they are the ones that cut out whatever attracts their attention. And we have like a little board and each person has their own vision board. What are vision boards? They're, it's exactly that. You have a vision, something you want to accomplish, something you desire to reach, to have to own, or to take a flight. So you have a picture of an airplane, whatever your desire is. So these are little projects that you, when you're finished, they're yours. They belong to you because you have produced them. Okay, so uh, we have another course entitled Developing Spiritually. Now, we are spirit. We are a spirit within a body. Okay, we are not the physical body. The body is an attachment. It belongs to us. We dress ourselves with that body, but we are spirit. Spirit is essence, energy. It's light. Okay, so uh, some people find this um, easy. Uh, others may not find it as easy, but we are essence. We are created in God's image after His likeness. So that's who we really, truly are. We are this power force. We are extremely powerful and gifted, but we don't know it, okay? Because we've listened to other people's criticism and put down and bully and blah, blah, blah. And so what we attempt to do is to get rid of all that, release and let it go, set it free, and find your essence of who you are. And so we, we help you, we guide you, we lead you. Okay, so we may do a little bit of journaling, a, a bit of meditation, and, and a bit of visualization. In case you don't know some of these terms, for, for the sake of time, because this is an hour program, it's live, we, we put you in a very relaxed state where you, you feel like you can almost see that which you are working on. So, but you're seeing it with your inner eye, not with the physical eye. So you close your eyes and you begin to visualize, to see. And, and let me tell you, it is as vivid 
and as real, if not more real, than the physical, tangible, outside world. And this is wonderful work. Uh, not many people have had that pleasure, that experience, to, to be um, secluded, isolated, apart from the world, from the hustle and bustle and, and the, the, the stress of everyday life. So this gives you an escape, you know, a, a, a moment of peace and harmony and calmness and tranquility. And we, we desire that because that's, w that's more conducive to you um, discovering because it's a discovery and it's exciting because you're discovering you. And it's so interesting. Uh, it just reminded me one time this woman, um, she was selling some things and I was looking at the things, but when I looked at her and I greeted her, uh, she wasn't like fully inside her body and I, and I could see that. Well, God has given me certain gifts. Okay, and so uh, it bothered me. She just was not inside. The body appeared to be like a shell, almost like empty. And I said, oh, and she was so willing. I said, oh, may I do something for you? And she was so willing. She gave me her hands right away. And, and so it, it was my desire, my intent, plus, you know, the skills and tools that I have. And when I touched it, her, this is what she said, which is so right on. She said to me, you just gave me me back to myself and so appropriate because that is exactly what happened on the spirit realm okay so we also um do healing work so people ask me well what kind of healing work do you do so it's it's very varied and it's multifaceted of course we do a lot of talking so you know that we i i call that talk therapy i listen i listen a lot okay so i let the person speak because in speaking, they're pressing out their conflicts, the turmoil, the, the pain, the suffering, the sorrow that they've carried for so many years. So we also do, we work with herbs, natural plants, medicinal plants. So we work with that as well, okay, in different forms. We also work with the Word of God because the Word of God, if you really look at it, is very healing, very soothing. So we have different kinds of modality we have called it's called havening it's a touch therapy you've heard about people being trained in healing touch you know n some nurses and doctors have taken those courses well we 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 apply some of that as well so there is healing in touch you know in jesus's time uh, so he went to heal the the uh, blind man and he put mud in his eyes so jesus touched so you know um we don't touch the rest of your body we may just touch your wrist or your hand but there is healing in touch and that's just to uh, for security reasons and s to protect ourselves and also other people so we are extremely careful we may shake your hand but you may not know in the shaking of the hand a lot of healing has uh, left it, it leaves but it stays because we we are healers so when we touch someone, there's healing that takes place. Okay, um, I'm sure if, if you, in certain religions, you may be touched with oil on your forehead or on your head or on the palms of your hands. So m maybe healing oil is just oil that has been blessed, that has been prepared for that specific um, occasion. We may use holy water we may use um, certain fragrances that are apropos for healing. Uh, so we may use some oils um, that, for instance, the, the frankincense, the myrrh, the, the lavender. Um, we may mix them. We may have them pure. It depends. Um, we teach a little bit because it's not a full course. We teach a little bit because we will be using that that in our healing process if there's something that you uh, don't want so we we just don't use it with you that's all you know you get bypassed that's all we talk about uh, in the next course business wealth and the the reason we bring that in is because many people are very highly concerned about finances and profits and you know that's their world and we you know we 
in, in, in a way it's our world also because we have bills and the bi bills need to get paid. If you don't pay your electricity, so you'll end up with no light, you know that, or gas, so you, you, you won't be able to cook. Or so, you know, we, we, we are aware, we're fully aware that that's the currency of this world, money, finances, cash, coins. So, you know, that's what we use to buy and sell. In the spirit realm, we don't use that. The, the currency of heaven is faith, your faith. And I smile because your faith really is what sets you free. Your faith is what heals you. Together with God, I believe in God. So if you, if you believe in God and that God is healing you and you believe it, and you receive it, you accept it, then it is done simple one two three you know my father once asked me so well how do you do your healing work because my father would do healing work as well so I told him he said why does it take you so long I said no no it, it only takes a split second but the people need training they need teaching they need some instructions they need someone to explain and they need it and they crave it to feed their intellect but the healing itself is like in a split moment in a blinking of an eye of a heartbeat it's instant, and I believe that, and I've seen it many, many times. Uh, in myself, I've had so many uh, different kinds of training based on the fact that I was extremely curious and that I grew up in a, in a family of healers, and, uh, and we're very sensitive to, to the spirit world because we are seers. What does a seer, what does that mean? So we're able to see. We were able to, to feel an environment. We were able to um, acknowledge it, recognize it, uh, be impacted by it, and also impact others for healing. My main uh, focus for my life in, 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 in this space of my time, but that began, began early on. I'm very much interested in healing. So healing to me is everything. And so. I have a caption that I say, heal all. Heal the land, the water, the, s the soil, the trees, the animals. Heal the, the wind, the fire, he finances. You can heal everything. Why? Because things have been damaged along the way. And so we, we are aware of that. So healing takes place. So you can heal water. Yeah. Um, it reminds me one time I visited a friend she was suffering from cancer and um, and I knew of this healing the waters so I asked permission I always ask permission I said oh you know may I may I pray over your water so because there are certain words that people will uh, accept so to pray over and I did and I prayed over the water that a glass of water that she was about to drink. And I put into it whatever God felt she needed at that point in time. Well, she drank the water, okay. And she said, I feel so peaceful. Everything is okay. And I marveled. Uh, I always marvel when I see healing taking place before me. She said, everything is okay. And she knew of her illness but everything was okay. She was at peace, and that, that, that was interesting. Okay, so we also have, um, in, in healing your finances, the business wealth, so we teach you about managing. So a lot of people don't have funds because they just simply don't know how to manage it. Uh, they're very, either they're very frugal or they're very spendthrift or they waste, they throw away money. So the whole idea is that you, you realize that you can manage it. Just like you, t you manage your time, you can manage your energy, your efforts, your money. You, everything can be managed. Your health. Okay, halfway mark. So I reintroduce my show and I thank you for that reminder. So I want to welcome you to Till Division Ideas. Till Division Ideas is a program that explores ideas and concepts in the following areas. Psychology, parapsychology, consciousness, ESP, dreams, spirituality, healing, 
creativity, quantum physics, business wealth, and the Word of God. I was just explaining about the title for this particular program, which is called Possible Courses. And I say possible, definitely there are going to be 14 courses within the program. That is a for sure. The title may be tweaked a little bit. And, and the, these titles, I, I just wrote them real fast because I know what I've been working on. So um, that's the reason I used possible. However, definitely, definitely 14 courses within the program. It is a piece of work that God inspired me. God gave it to me. It's a brilliant idea. It's not my idea. God gave it to me. God downloads information into my heart, my soul, my spirit. And I get so delighted because uh, God reveals something to me. He gives me, I, I call them keys, because with those keys I open uh, the different dimensions and realms in the spirit realm. And so I feel He gives me these mysteries He reveals to me. In, in waking life I call it hindsight, uh, foresight, uh, insight, because it's, uh, it's, it's new information. But once he gives it to me, I go, yeah, how come I didn't know that then? It, yeah, that's so right on. I recognize the truth in it instantly. Uh, and God works like that with me, and, and I'm grateful that he does that with me. And I'm faithful, by the way. I'm very loyal. God gives me something, I write it down. <laughs> I'm a writer. So I write. I love paper. <laughs> my director, Joey, knows it. <laughs> I love paper and pen. Love it, love it. Because I am forever writing. And so, and the reason I write is to honor it and to remember it because God gives me so much, so very much. And, you know, the ideas just flow in very fleeting, very quickly. And um, if I don't write it down, I want to make sure I remember. Now, the developing of each idea, that takes time. That's different. So then I use everything that God has given me, my memory, my intellect, studies that I've I've had in the past information. So I, I, I'm very eclectic that way, and so I will bring everything together. I'll bring the sciences, I bring philosophy, the poets, uh, the scripture. I, I bring everything that I can that fits into that piece of work that I'm working on. Okay, so to continue, I had already um, talked about 12 different courses. And there's another one that perhaps I'll spend a little uh, time. Please excuse me. I, I ate and I need to burp. And I, I don't like that, but I, I stuffed my face. So we call this particular one mirror image. In the it mirror image, it is so important. God was just downloading fairly recently, like a, a day or two ago, he downloads, and, and it, it feels so like I know it. Yeah, that's the way it is. And so you, you, and we can use physical mirrors to do this, by the way. And there's a lot of um, discovery when you do this piece of work. Because what happened, remember, um, God created you in his image after his likeness. So when you look, you are attempting to see you, the essence of you, the real you, who you are. You know, they say that the eyes are the mirror of the soul. And yes, so you see yourself in this mirror and things begin to download within you. We guide you, of course, and you discover so much, so very much. And we ask you to write down as the, this information is coming to you. And the reason we ask you to write and the writing is for your own keepsake. We don't keep any of your work. Um, and the reason we do that is because you will either experience stripping, stripping meaning things are being released, things are letting go, things are being taken away that you don't need, that were put on you falsely. It was a lie. It was a mistake. It was an error. It, it, it's, we, we can begin, and you see it. And you see it, and you know it, and you feel it. No one else, you could be looking at the mirror, no one else knows what's going on, but you do. And, and we can attest to that, because we've done this so many times with different people, and we know the work. I, myself, have done it. Uh, I mean, there's a piece of work that 
if you really look intently at your own eyes in the mirror, do you know what happens? I don't think I want to give you that bit, but something interesting happens, and people will say, oh my gosh, and it is exciting. It is exciting. Uh, it's amazing. It's, a, it's awesome. It's an awesome piece of work. So we, we, we let go. We let go, and then the beauty of you begins to penetrate and, and to come through. And uh, when I say the beauty, um, so I'm not talking about false eyelashes or dyed hair or anything like that. No, the essence of you, the beauty of you, the light, the, 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 you glow. It's, it's, it's the light coming through. The health, the beauty, it's amazing, simply amazing. I don't want to give away too, too much because, of course, there are many things that are for surprise, you know, because we want you to, to be fresh and new. Okay, another uh, workshop that we give, so we, I call it the Wisdom Warrior, and, and this brings back so many memories in my own life, uh, beginning with uh, what I told you a little while ago in that last program that in 1983, 1984, God gave me a name. One of the names was uh, Warrior of God. So uh, in that process, 83, 93, 203, 213, oh my gosh, over 30 years, okay? So 34 years. So what happens is in that process of growing and developing and fitting into that name, that the name fits me, I grew into it, it is my name. I cover myself with that warrior because I have become it, that part of me. And, and so it's not, it's not that I became quarrelsome or anything like that, not at all. But I did become a little more bolder, daring, a tiny bit more risk-taking, a little more clear, a little more upfront, a little more direct, a little more perhaps even truthful. I've always been truthful. I, I have an issue with truth, uh, but my issue is that I would present it so easily, so gently, so diplomatically, with a lot of tact, you know, so the other person wouldn't be hurt and injured, because if I'm into healing, how could I possibly hurt the other? But now I, I kind of get to it quicker. Uh, I don't f run around in circles, you know, trying to, to, to be so extra gentle with this person like walking on eggshells. Um, I've become a little more, uh, I prefer to call it direct, truthful, and fairly quickly. So, so you know, in that piece of work, uh, God has revealed many mysteries about me, myself, and, and I've written them out that it can apply to everyone to cover, so because I'm into healing. Uh, so the person has a space in, in, in the work that we give them for them to write their own personal experiences. Uh, so God has given me my story, my story as to from the time I grew to the present moment, from, from the time I was a youngster. And, and, you know, we call them like stepping stones, like key points, a very key, very dramatic uh, moments in my life that shifted me, that turned me, that uh, put me in a, in a slightly different trajectory so that um, you have the opportunity to begin uh, writing your, your own story. And so we call them keys. They're keys. They're, they're wisdom keys, and God will give them to whomever He wishes. They're there. It's just that we we have not reached out to receive them because we have, you know, everything is there, but the air is there. But if you refuse to breathe, hey, you know, who's to blame you? You don't want to breathe, you don't breathe. Have you ever held your breath because something stunk? But ultimately, you would have to breathe, otherwi otherwise you die, right? So, so it's there, but you have to receive it. So God is gracious, you know, He has many favors and blessings and promises and gifts and talents, oh my gosh. But if you don't receive it, it's just there. So um, there's a piece of work that within this that I call the givers and the takers. And whether you fall into one category or the other and, or in between, 
So some people are just give and give and give and give. Uh, I kind of consider myself that way. I don't measure. It's, you know, it's there for me to give. I have it in abundance. Whatever I give, I feel I have abundantly. And if I don't go into thinking I don't have, I used to, God will just replenish me because he's my provider. He's, he, he created me, so he provides everything. He created my body, my mind, my soul, my spirit, my breath, whatever. He created everything. So I acknowledge that. And so I, I think I have an abundance. I have more than enough. I really do. I have more than enough. I do know how to measure things, but I have more than enough. Th there's no limit in God's kingdom. Th it, it, it is limitless. <laughs> so, so when I need, I ask, and the Lord and behold, there it is. It is fantastic. It is, uh, it's, it's almost like a little miracle. I love it. I love it. Because that's the way God deals with me. Because... I come to him as a child because in those moments I feel to be a child. I, I know that I am. I'm God's child and he takes care of me and he protects me and he gives me and it, and it happens spontaneously. I cannot explain it other than uh, I, I think of something and I said, oh, it would be so nice if, <laughs> and there it is, okay? I did in the past have an issue with money. I felt I didn't have. So I was in the lack. It's the lack mentality. I don't go there. So whatever I need, I have enough to pay for it. It's amazing, amazing how whatever I have, it gets stretched. <laughs> it gets stretched. It gets stretched to the point that it amazes me. It amazes me. And so I'm just sharing a bit of myself because I am the designer, the writer of all these courses, okay? God downloaded the information to me, and so I, um, I'm the one putting them within this program. So um, when we talk about the, the Wisdom Warrior, we, we also encourage you, we put you in, in that little meditation I spoke to you about, and so we ask you to, to call forth your wisdom figure. Some people have, may have a wisdom figure. It could be the, the wise old man, the wise old woman. It could be a, a, a spiritual uh, wisdom figure. Um, for me, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. They're my friends. They're my assistants. They're my helpers. I call on them. I call them the Holy Spirit. I call for everything and anything, okay? I'm not embarrassed to say it, not at all. They have a task, I have a task. <laughs> God's word says, God's word says, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and it will be opened. And I accept that. And so, yeah, before I used to be, I thought it was, you know, I don't know what I thought, but it had to do with pride. I didn't like asking favors. I hated it. I wanted to be so independent. Did I, did I realize that everything is interdependent, interlaced, interrelational? Oh my goodness! And so I'm so happy that God opened my eyes, and and that that awakening took place during a, a spiritual workshop I did with a nun. And uh, the nun brought it to my attention, and, and I said, oh, my gosh. Uh, she said, well, before you leave this particular workshop, uh, we, we're going to have your feet washed. That was unheard of. How can I let someone else wash my feet when I was so young and strong and, you know, very competent? And uh, very humbling. It didn't happen. Something happened, and it, it did not take place. However, Lord and behold, whatever I learned, I applied, and I did give a workshop in my home, and I called it exactly that, the washing of the feet. And uh, who did the washing? It, me. And, and then one of the attendants washed my feet, and I felt so humbled and so, um, so loved, really, so whole. A part of me was lacking and I didn't fully know, but this goes back many, many years. And I'm so happy that God reveals each day, he reveals a little nugget. I call them the pearls of wisdom that he gives me, so a gold nugget. And uh, 
So, yeah, I'll call up upon all these wonderful spiritual people that I know and that I keep in com conversation with. I'm always, <laughs> I'm always in conversation, in my thoughts, in my mind. I'm always talking to God, you know, and uh, Lord and behold, if I'm silent, I get an answer. I, I, about that silent piece, so oh, I advise. I do it all the time, all the time. So I seclude myself. I love my privacy, my quiet downtime. And I kind of, I don't know, la la land. I meditate, I relax, and I, I get in touch with the higher realm. I get in touch with the God within me because, you know, God is inside of you, by the way, in case you didn't know it. He created you in His image after His likeness. You are spirit. God is a spirit, so you know He's inside of you. So, you know, to, for you to embrace that and to know that, I mean, you know, not everybody knows that. So um, you, you call upon these people, and they're so willing to help, to protect. Uh, remember... Um, everything that has happened in the world to ruin things, to destroy things, to, to damage the soil, the air, the water. Uh, so so we, we are attempting to recover that back to its natural uh, best form possible. You know, and you've heard how the soil has been contaminated or the air and, and so and now the products that we ingest, that we eat, they've been damaged, and that's why a lot of people are going eating organic, eating real food, and and uh, I don't know if you know this a little bit, but there is such a thing as um, modification of food, food modifying, and um, it's, we think we're eating food, so you think you may be eating a piece of cheese, and it's not cheese at all, and that that is very disturbing. Uh, I have friends that will be present that are wizards at this. They're, they're extremely knowledgeable experts in uh, food modification. They're, they've done so much reading and learning and so um, we teach you how to go back to nature and how to begin healing and how to do it not only just for yourself because some people are called to, of course, heal yourself. You have to heal yourself first. That's a, 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 a must. Because how can you become a healer if you're not healed yourself? And, and we are so complex and multidimensional that there are so many aspects. Now, can you imagine there are 37.2 trillion cells inside your body? Can you imagine each cell having information. Can you imagine having to heal? That's a lot of healing, okay? Luckily that we have within the body, within the system, that one cell communicates with another cell and passes on the information. So as you begin the healing process, one cell carries that healing property, carries it onto the next cell and the next and the next, and before you know it, we have clusters of cells that have been healed. Okay, when we, we do, uh, I failed to, to mention a little while ago, we do a lot of um, getting rid of the negatives right on, right off the bat, um, because that's just going to be in the way and very distracting, disturbing. So we let go of a lot of negatives. So we, we ask you key questions in written form on your own booklet, you know, um, your belief system. So we, we all have a core belief system. Core belief systems are very difficult to change, by the way, but most of the belief systems can be changed. And you, you change them, we create a shift. You, you, in order to do that, you must first look at it, identify it, call it by name, and then be willing, make a choice, make a decision. Yeah, you want to let go of that piece because it doesn't fit you. It doesn't suit you. It's not profitable. It's not valuable. And so what you do, you decide to, to let it go. So we, we encourage that. If you feel you have this extremely bad habit and um, you, you've not been able to let it go, so we assist you, we teach you. Um, some work can be done right during the course. Other work you continue at home because every... 
imagine if you developed a bad habit, and let's say you're 50, 40, whatever years old, so that bad habit has been living in you, driving you, forcing you, and you're doing all these things, trust me, yes, a miracle can happen, and you will be able to let it go instantly, because God is gracious, God can do that. Other things have to be worked on, okay? So you have to decide. Uh, just give me the time. How many minutes do I have? Seven. Huh. Seven. Thanks. So, so we have the, the, this ability. We're ma malleable. We can change. We can be molded. Many, many years ago, it was thought that you were born with so many brain cells. And once they died, they died. You were left without X number of cells, less. But now they've discovered that they repair and that you new ones can be created. Can you imagine new ones? That is fantastic news. So know that you have the power to change. You have the power. All you have to do is make the decision. You know, there's a scripture that says, you know, God gives us the, the power, that the power of life and death are in the tongue. So choose life that, that, that you may live. So how, how does that happen? How do you have the power of life and death in your tongue? Because the tongue can be a two-edged <laughs> two sword, you know, and, and scripture, the Holy Spirit has a sword of truth, and it's a two-edged sword that can separate the, the muscle, the sinew from the bones. It, it has that power. So you also have power, but uh, how do you know your power? Do you know? Do you know how to access it? Do you know what is detrimental to your natural power? Do you know who is the one that comes to st steal, kill, and destroy? Do you know who that is? Well, in Scripture, they, he has a name. His name is Satan, the devil, the old serpent. Okay, that's in Scripture. But you, you know, sometimes we, we decide not to follow God or, you know, we just decide to do the wrong thing for whatever reason. Maybe you find it pleasurable. But, you know, comes a time when you say, oh, you know, following that road got me sick. Following that road got me into a lot of trouble. Following road in that, in that road, now I'm in jail, that kind of stuff. You know, you know what I'm talking about. So you have choices, and, and we empower you. We empower you to know yourself, to know that you have a choice. You have a choice. You have free will. You are always making a choice, a decision. And if you don't exercise your free will, if you don't learn to identify yourself, recognize who you are, someone else will do it for you. They'll identify you. They'll bully you. They'll abuse you. They'll aggress against you. They'll hurt you. So, choose. Do you want to be continuously hurt, abused? Do you... Do you prefer to reach for the light, bring light into the situation, bring wisdom, bring the virtues of hope, love, joy. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I'll forgive, but I won't forget. You've heard that phrase. Well, honey, you haven't forgiven. If you still remember the hurt and the damage done, and it comes up and you get all angry and frustrated, well, then you haven't really let it go. I understand. Your memory is intact. You can remember it, but it's so distant, it doesn't touch you. It doesn't I impact you. It doesn't affect you because you have gone to a higher ground. We call it higher ground, higher energies, higher forces. It's all the God. <laughs> Some people call it the God factor. That's interesting. So, yeah, yeah, we have God. Scripture says that God is within you. So if you can access that part of you, access that part of you, it's very powerful, by the way, extremely powerful. Uh, when, you, when you feel it, when you feel it and you're so much in touch with it, 
you, you, you feel the power, you feel its power. Um, you could still be gentle and sweet and nice and caring and nurturing, which I think I believe that I am. I'm very relatable, easygoing. Let me tell you, I am also highly focused, very focused. And sometimes when I call forth a particular power, I need to be focused. I need, like, a, like a, a, less than an hour ago, I was writing most of these things. I was organizing it. I was writing it down and adding to it. I was so focused. And so you have that power. And so we aim to empower you. And so, you know, over centuries, Different groups have been put down, women, um, people of certain ethnicity, and they've been injured and hurt. And so I, I say to you, you don't have to keep living in that slave mentality. And so you have the freedom to choose. Yes, that did happen in, the his, in our history. That did happen. That did take place. Yes, that was painful. Yes, that was unjust. It was unfair. But we are calling for, for warriors to come and fight for the truth, fight for the light, fight for wisdom, fight for what is right, right fight for righteousness. And so I, I, like I dress myself with the armor of God, as I dress myself, with all that power, I invite you, dress yourself, and may God bless. Thank you for watching Till Division Ideas. Every second Thursday of each month, well, now it's the end of the, almost the end of the year, November, then December, and then, and then for the new year, we will be on a different time schedule. So once again, thank you for watching Till Division Ideas, and bye-bye. Come, call us, join us in this particular program. Thank you to the people that have always helped me produce my shows. Joey Walters, my director, with all the wonderful images he puts up. Jonathan Griffith, um, that he takes care of sound. And uh, Fran Pellegrino and uh, Richard Graciano, whenever he's around. Thank you so much. And the rest of the staff, Rene Valdivia, that he's in charge of everything. And I thank him for my beautiful set and the lighting. And that's it. Thank you. Bye now.